Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Entertainment Dome. It's us again. Hiya. Hello there. Ah, oh, the news this week. The news. No controversies, just stupidity. Well, it's and from some... Ubisoft, so what do you expect? <laughs> and some really weird stuff. Like... From movies? Yes. Which will probably also suck, but what, what do you expect with video game movies nowadays? Yeah. But basically, in the news this week, we've had several news from good old Ubisoft. Ah, Ubisoft. Still One... not content with pissing everybody off. <laughs> Indeed. It's it's such wonderful how they always seem to be... They have a coherent trail of thought whenever they like to piss off their fans. Or fans begin... of other fan bases. You always begin to wonder if maybe it's intentional. Yeah, they're intentionally trolling everybody. And not the good kind of trolling. No. <laughs> it's it's an interesting week. We've also had some several movie news. One interesting, one very, very bad. Well, not so much bad as more absolutely goddamn confusing. Well, shall we start off with the movie business then? Yes, we might as well. Tetris is being planned as a movie. What? Oh, it gets better. It's not just planned as a movie, folks. It's planned as, and I quote, an epic sci-fi adventure. Tetris. A game all about trying to line up randomly shaped blocks. (laughs) When I see Tetris, I don't immediately think, oh my god, this is the grandest thing I have ever seen in my life. Tetris. This is on the lines of Star Wars and Star Trek. It. I can't even get angry at this. I mean, most times, most video game adaptations, I sort of when I hear about them, I just think, "Oh God, they're going to mess us up so badly." But with Tetris, I feel more confused than anything. It's more somebody, bonkers. Somebody looked at Tetris and thought, "We can make a movie out of this." It's almost like they're making a video game out of Monopoly. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah, the Monopoly movie. I forgot all about that. That's still, <laughs> that's still happening. There's like, this needs to be a recurring thing. Remember Battleship? Oh, that became God. a movie? <laughs> Somebody looked at Battleship and thought, we can make a movie out of this. I'm sorry, don't he... you mean Transformers without the Transformers? Yeah, Transformers without the Transformers. But just to go slightly off topic, that Battleship movie looks fucking stupid. Oh, it was. It's like... It's like, it's like aliens. Really? You had to put aliens in... If, because you know what, that's what happens we're, in Battleship. We're not going to get on that because... I, I can't think of... What can you actually do with Tetris? I, I am really struggling to think. Though, to be fair, I know a lot of people would always make you jump to the conclusion that this is going to fucking suck and it's going to fail. But to its defence, I'd like to remind everybody about the Lego movie. Yeah. When we all heard the Lego movie, we all thought the same thing. We thought, oh god, this is going to suck. How can you make a movie about Lego? And what did they do? They made one of the best films ever. Also, to be fair on Tetris, is that Tetris doesn't have a story, and this is so out there bonkers, it might work. Yeah, exactly. Because Tetris has, like, it's not like something like the Super Mario Brothers movie, which (laughs) which had established characters and world. The Super Mario Brothers movie failed because the people making it did not know Mario. But I'd still Tetris, watch that over over bullshit, though. Yeah, it's fair enough. But um, with the Tetris film, because there's so very little there, it gives them a lot of creative freedom. Mm-hmm. So, in the right hands, this could very well be a decent film. But the I think the biggest... The thing that's worrying me is the fact they're saying it's a very big epic sci-fi movie. I've got this horrible thing that they're going to try and make Tetris serious. Yeah. I feel like maybe if it was in the hands of somebody who went, okay, we are making a Tetris movie. This is a fucking stupid idea, but so let's roll with it and have as much fun as we can. Yeah, that will work. Make it and, self-aware. Yeah, or just make fun of it. You know, have, have, give it a sense of humour. Because a problem with a lot of, not just video, not just video game films, just films or TV in general, is when they try to be so damn serious about what they're talking about. And it's like, guys, have a sense of humour. Oh, don't know. Sometimes that works in its favour. 
But sometimes when you try to be so serious about like what you're doing, it almost comes across as it almost, it becomes almost funny when you're trying to be so serious. Comes about too what melodramatic. You're about. Yeah, exactly. I think it it depends on what thing it is. If it's something that's ultimately serious straight away, then yeah, without it doesn't need the humor. But sometimes it's good to inject a little bit of humor into the proceedings. And Tetris, I think, definitely needs that if it wants to be successful. Yeah, definitely. I'm actually trying to think, what 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 would you class as a successful video game adaptation? Um, the Ace Attorney movie. I was just about to say that. <laughs> That's the only one I think that actually was good. I have actually yet to see the Ace Attorney movie in it in in full. Because I watched like the first 30 minutes of it and got really put off. I'd say stick in with it because it def- especially the latter half does stick to the game fairly well. I have seen like bits and pieces throughout the entire film and like some stuff regarding like the end of it. And it, it in a way it perfectly captures the Ace Attorney sense. It feels like Ace Attorney. Mm-hmm. And I like that. But it also seems a bit too grim in places. Like, in terms of the colouring, like, all the environments just looked very bleak, and Maya herself just just didn't just didn't have any of the per- of the personality from the game. She wasn't, like, peppy or, like, mm. silly or anything. She just seemed a bit more serious than anything, and that, that sort of put me off. But, like, again, I can't fully judge the Ace Attorney movie if I haven't seen it all the way. As far as good video game films that I have seen, uh, the only two that really come to mind are... The Prince of Persia movie, which was okay. Ugh, I... Do you not like that film? I'll come on to it when you re- when you reveal your second one. Go on. But, yeah, the Prince of Persia movie, which I think is okay, but I have never played the games. So, and the only other one is one that a lot of people probably have not seen, and that's the Professor Layton movie, The Eternal Diva. Wait, there's which... a Professor Layton movie? What did you not know about this? No, I did it not know out... about this. It came out like around the same time Lost Future did. It's like an animated film that takes oh, place. Oh, du- okay. It takes place during the um the prequel trilogy, hmm. and it's qu- it's quite good. It's really good, but it works because Layton's always been very story heavy anyway. Hmm. I was about you're to say, se- you're essentially watching a let's play of the ge- of a game, especially if it's animated. The- was was it animated by the same studio? It was animated by the same studio. That explains they- it. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So it was close. It was close. It was made closely with level five although i have heard tales that there are making a live action professor layton in japan of course so it's going to be like ace attorney <laughs> although i haven't heard anything else about it so it sounds like one of the many 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 video game films that is currently trapped in limbo yeah because I, I don't know how many people are aware of this but there are so many video game film adaptations that are just going nowhere yeah there was like, quite a few an assassin's creed movie is apparently in the works that's going nowhere the uh, there was. I remember there was a Spyro the Dragon movie that was meant to be being worked yeah, on. Yeah, year years and years ago I heard that, about that. That that vanished into the ether. That was around about the same time they were doing the latter game trilogy. Yeah, the Legend of Spyro trilogy. It was around. I think it was being done by the same people who did Aragon. Oh God. So we we could probably all be thankful that that film oh, cancelled. Oh fucking yes, that uh, was a goddamn th- disaster. What else? Um. There's a Shadow of the Colossus movie that's apparently in the works, but that's going nowhere. I'm kind of glad of that because I think the video game, it wouldn't f- capture the same feel as the video game because in the video game, there's not much dialogue and all the dialogue that is spoken isn't English. It, yeah, exactly. And I think like in the wrong hands, they probably do some really bad, like they probably make Wanda talk. Uh, <laughs> they'll they make the horse be- talk. <laughs> I'm just gonna. I'm actually just Sorry, gonna come up with a. Wilbur. I'm gonna come up with a list of every possible thing they could do to fuck up a Shadow of the Colossus movie. Uh, make Wanda talk. Make the horse talk. Uh, have the big bad shadowy demon at the end be defeated and oh, everyone God, happy. They would. Have Wanda and the girl be reunited and live happily ever after. The Colossi have, have lovely squeaky voices. The Colossi talk. Have them. T- have them live. Have them get brought back to life at the end. Everything's fine. <laughs> Oh. Disney presents Shadow of the Colossus. Oh god! <laughs> There's even a Warcraft movie that's coming out, and that's probably that was trapped in limbo for a long time because Sam Raimi was going to be directing that. I remember there was talks of a Metroid ma- movie that was going to be directed by John Woo. 
but I don't think that ever went anywhere. And I think I'm, tr- after... I'm trying to pitch that in my mind, and it's glorious. Yeah, I think I think a Metro movie directed by John Woo could probably work. But then Nintendo, I think after the after the after the Super Mario Brothers movie, Nintendo have very much decided that to not have any movies at all based on their franchise. That might be a good idea. I don't know. It's kind of a shame because I feel like in the right hands they could make some really good stuff. Like I wouldn't mind seeing maybe a animated Legend of Zelda film or something. That would be interesting. But then again, again, you'd have it that Link would have to talk. Mm, and I could live with. I could live with that. I mean, they had him talk in the cartoon. Excuse me, princess. <laughs> well, maybe not like that. It's kind of ironic, though, how like Nintendo is like, oh, we won't, we don't want any movies based on our franchises, and then Metroid Other M, which is essentially a glorified Metroid movie, oh, and God. it sucked. That was abysmal. We'll save that for another time. Yeah, but uh, going back onto the subject, uh, in terms of like video game movies that are actually that have actually been made, I know a lot of people speak favorably of the first Tomb Raider movie. Yeah, because that wasn't too bad. It's it how to put it it did follow some of the tropes of the vi- the original video game going in the dungeon the dungeon crawling and all this stuff but even then it still had some hiccups yeah i know i know it, i have i've heard that it's not perfect but it's still like a decent film as opposed to the sequel which everybody hated yeah i'll, I'll actually kind of admit something i didn't but... think the sequel was that bad no i'd actually say that the first and the second were pretty fucking close it just had some uh, weird storyline choices. And on the subject of uh, good video game movies, actually, uh, these these two films aren't regarded as being good, but people still like them for different reasons. Yeah. Those, be- those being the Mortal Kombat film and the, <laughs> and the Street Fighter movie. They're usually regarded as so bad it's good. Yeah, particularly Street Fighter movie. Oh my god, the Street people, Fighter movie. People love that because it's so bad. Quick, change the channel! <laughs> Best line in the, the movie. And of course, Raul Julia as oh, M. Bison. Th- the, d- the day M. Bison graced your village was the most important day of your life. But for me, it was Tuesday. <laughs> That's Raul Julia owned that. Just I've, that is the general consensus: the fact that Raul Julia was the best thing in that film, as well as the quick change the channel line. But did you ever see the other Street Fighter film that they did, The Legend of Chun Li? Oh my god! Where it was really violent and dark, and M Bison was an Irish estate owner oh, we, person. I think we could do a whole episode on how shitty that movie was because it. I haven't properly seen it all the way through, but from what I've seen and heard, it looked weird. It was really bad. Also, the fact that they kept they kept changing so much of different characters. Like, for example, um, Vega was an ugly, almost demon-looking guy. Someone out more combat, <laughs> which doesn't make any sense considering the whole point of Vega's character is that he's a massive narcissist. Yeah, it literally made no sense. There's also, I swear that um, the main actress. Uh, yeah, she, uh, apparently the main actress from that movie left Smallville to star in that movie. I have not seen Smallville, so I don't know how good of a decision that was. It was a really bad one. <laughs> As, people keep giving Smallville crap, and to be to be fair, yeah, it's not great, but then again, it's a Superman series, so what do you expect? You really don't like Superman, do you? I really you? don't. <laughs> <laughs> We should make that. We should make that an episode, a debate on Superman. (laughs) Who? What side on the fence would you be, Michael? Well, I'd be. I'd be for Superman. I love Superman. (laughs) Oh God! But a conversation for another time. But uh, there Uh, is. When it comes to the Prince of Persia movie, there was there was a few things I didn't like. Quite a few. I can think of a few things I didn't like. I know I said the movie was decent, but it had issues. Big issues. But probably the biggest one being the being the ending. I was just. Are you are you about to mention what I think you're going to mention? Uh, probably. It's the. Oh, we go back in time and solve everything. Yeah, the Prince of Persia movie ends with them going back in... Well, them, I say the prince. The prince goes back in time and manages to stop everything that happened in the film from ever happening to begin with. 
budding uh, writers. Never do, do that. That is it's, up there with the uh, it's all it, a dream. Yeah, along with it's all a dream, having the characters go back in time and stop the events ever happening is also a terrible idea. Because it's all because the thing is though, I think the only reason sh- that kind of thing happens is when the writers have realised shit, so much bad shit has happened, there is no logical way for any of it to be fixed. Let's just have them go back in time and stop it from ever happening. Uh, it's lazy writing. In a it's nutshell. lazy, and it's also an insult to the viewer, because you've essentially said, you've just wasted two hours of your time for nothing. Mm-hmm. Because <laughs> it never happened. So goddamn bad. And there's a- poor there's Ben actually- Kingsley. Oh, yeah, and Ben King... <laughs> as soon as we saw Ben Kingsley in that film, it was like, he- he's the baddie. Yep. <laughs> we-, we know it's him. He lo- he kind of looks like the-, the villain of the original game, so, yeah. <laughs> you see him, and it's like, it's Ben Kingsley. There you go, he's the villain. It's a Although British actually... guy in an American movie. Yep, he's the villain. Well, I think, actually, my favourite bit in that whole film, and probably the probably the only few bits I actually remember from it, is when... Because the prince gets framed for killing his adopted father, who's the king, Mm -hmm. and he has to go on the run. And one of his brothers is like, oh, how could you? I'm going to hunt you down and kill you. And then there's a scene where, like, the brother confronts the prince, and the prince is like, no, let me explain why I am innocent. And the brother's like, oh, you're right. Well, and that's the case. I'm going to help you. Five seconds later, the brother (laughs) is killed. (laughs) I cacked myself. (laughs) That, and it's not even that it happened once. It happened twice with his other brother. Oh, did it? I can't remember yeah, that. Yeah, because remember the other... Br- he goes... he When he meets up with his other brother, who's become, I think, the king at this point. Yeah. He goes to him and says, Look, here's my proof that this, is, that this dagger is what our uncle wants. And he stabs himself with it and tells his brother to use it. Brother uses it and ends like, Oh, shit, you were telling the truth. I'll help you now. Uncle comes in... He goes to stab the uncle, and then he gets killed. (laughs) It's like, oh my god! You pulled that shit twice in the same film? Tell me why this was good again. (laughs) I think the only thing that I liked about it was the, um... Ah, the two... The one who owns the ostriches. Alfred Molina? Yeah. Alfred Molina and the guy who keeps... Who's the, the knife thrower. Those two were good. I think actually, I just remember another thing that's sort of like really stupid about the film is the fact that like the prince and his love interest like go throughout the whole film doing that typical, typical. Oh, I hate you. Yeah, oh, well, I hate God. you too. We're totally not going to get together by the end of the movie. No, we're totally not. And it's like, oh, for God's sake, we know where this is going. And obviously they hook it up. Mm-hmm. But then she dies, and then the prince goes back in time and saves everyone. And then he and the love interest get together, despite the fact that he might remember it all. She doesn't. But, but she doesn't, because to her it never happened. Also, the fact but... is they still conquered her city and killed loads of her people. <laughs> you know, swings and roundabouts. Ah, uh, but it's like... Eight, it was like years and years ago. That kind of shit happened all the time. It was. <laughs> but it literally, like, five minutes later going, Oh, sorry, we made a mistake. <laughs> no fucking shit. It's like when you get up in the morning, Ah, oh, what's happened while I've been asleep? Uh, well, we got conquered and most of us got wiped out. Oh. Well, what about the invaders? Oh, their prince is handsome as fuck. You should marry him. Oh, really? <laughs> and he's really sorry about it all. He's also played by Jake Gyllenhaal. I will to give be... that. I will give it that that Jake Gyllenhaal was. Yeah. Even though I would say it should have been played by a Persian actor, but if he's they're going a... for the full Hollywood route, yeah, he's a good choice. He was a good actor for it. I thought he was decent. I thought That's most of not... the casting was good. To be fair. I think that's sort of what we mean, because the the standards for a video game adaptation are set very low, which is why I think Prince of Persia did, like, fairly decently. It's because we everyone went into it with very low expectation. It was like, oh, that, that actually wasn't half bad. This wasn't John Leguizamo playing Luigi. Uh, to be fair, like, I, when I first saw the, the Mario movie, I hated it. Now that I'm a lot older... I kind of can't. I kind of can't help but like it a bit. It's one of those movies that's just so stupid, but it's hilarious. Also, Bob Hoskins, man. Oh, you know. oh, Re- Bob. rest in peace, Bob. Um, Apparently, Bob Hoskins I'm... and John Leguizamo were pissed for most of that film. 
yeah, apparently, like, they both hated working on that film, and, like, they, they, they became really good friends because of it. Yeah. Like, they would, they, dr- they got drunk so many times together. Good on them. Yeah. yeah. If, if you're in I a mean, shitty movie or something like that, and you make good friends and get pissed all the time, yeah, good, go for it. One good thing that came out of it. Yeah. He made good friends. That's actually a really good thing. But, yeah, Super Ooh. Mario movie. The oh. thing is, though, even if it didn't have the Mario license attached to it, if it even if it was a completely original film, it still probably would have been quite bad. Yeah, probably, but just not as bad because it because like the film is like, oh, when the meteor hit, the dinosaurs weren't wiped out; they were just sent into another dimension. <laughs> I think it, that was the thing. That, even the nostalgia critic picked that up when he was like, "And already, it's buggered up." <laughs> It's like within the first five minutes of the film, they established this. The meteor didn't kill the dinosaurs. It just split. It just sort of set them into another dimension where they evolved into their own version of humans. And it's like, what? <laughs> it literally, I mean, it literally turned into one of those movies of, oh look, we go into their dimension. And to be to be fair, it, yeah, it's a stupid idea. But to be fair. It's original. Yeah. You can't say anybody else of a At least at it. the so time like... it was original. Yeah. yeah and then loads of to... other movies tried it as well. Co- well, I mean, I mean, the whole dinosaurs being set into another dimension. But it's like, you know, I'll give them credit for that. No one else ever thought of it. It's just the problem was, though, is the fact that on its own merits, the movie is quite bad. It's just the fact that they attached the Mario license to it. And so, like, the movie was basically telling us that this was Mario, this was Luigi, that's Bowser. And and you look over and it's Dennis Hopper. And it's like, what? (laughs) Dennis Hopper is Bowser? Monkey! A monkey. (laughs) Oh, and the the other. Ba-bomb. (laughs) Ba-bomb. Dennis Hopper. To be fair, one of the things I did like about that film is the fact that actually, it was, like, canonically Luigi and Daisy got together. Yeah, yeah, that's true. It's like, the the film actually addressed it because fa- like anyone who's played the game is sort of like it's obvious that Mario and Peach are very much an item. But it's like, well, then what the hell is Luigi and Daisy meant to be? Well, I guess they're together. It only makes sense. It's never really put up upon, but it's there. I like to think that Luigi and Daisy are together. I'd say it is. They complement each other well because Luigi's like such a sort of like you know he's a bit he's he's very he's very sissy very cowardly and yet Daisy's loud and very tomboyish so it's like I think, I think they perfectly. work yeah it's a great contrast but um back on the subject of video game films actually uh there are actually some more that are actually that are actually coming out within the next few years ones that have actually like you know are being finished and the thing that and the and the common thing between all three of them is that they're all animated. And I think that says some that says something a lot. The fact yeah. that all about all these other video game films are like in limbo for years, but they're all live action. These three are coming out within the next few years and they've all been animated. Plus, I think they're also being worked very closely with the original developers of the game. Which is good. Yeah. Uh the three in question being the Ratchet and Clank movie, which should be coming out next year. Mm-hmm. Uh the film's gonna be the film's essentially a retelling of the first game. Like it's gonna be all about how Ratchet and Clank first meet and all that. And I I think it'll I think it'll be fine. I was about to say I mean, from what I've seen of it, it looks amazing. So there's only been one proper trailer on yeah. it, but small it, teaser, but it still looks awesome. Yeah, uh, the second one is the Sly Cooper movie, which really threw me off when I found that was being made, because not many people are as familiar with Sly Cooper as they are Ratchet and Clank. I was about to say that's a little hidden gem for the most part. Yeah, and to be fair, and again, all we've got is a teaser to go by. Animation-wise, it took me a while to warm up to it because the character models look so different from how they do in the games. Mm. Like Sly looks bizarrely realistic. They try to give him like they give him like proper raccoon features, and it's like it's yeah, he's Rocket a raccoon, raccoon, in the raccoon and Sly Cooper. It is. It's Rocket Raccoon. That's what he looks like. <laughs> voiced by Bradley Cooper. Uh, no, he's not going to be voiced by Bradley Cooper. Nah. nah. He, 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 funny thing, he's not. He's not actually going to be voiced by his voice actor from the games, which is weird. That doesn't but, show up, right? But no, well, to be fair, the guy who, the guy who voiced him in the teaser did a good job, I think, mm. captured the personality perfectly. But um, and the other one, and admittedly, it's the most worryingly of the three, oh. is the CGI Sonic the Hedgehog movie. Oh. Now, when I when I read CGI Sonic the Hedgehog movie in the works, I thought, cool, because the people working on the on like the writing for the games right now. Ha- do a decent job 
you know they don't make it stupidly serious they're quite it's quite funny for the most and part sonic boom which is currently in the works i mean the cartoon's not coming out over here until next year which is fucking stupid because the tie-in game's coming out this year but different oh, conversation Sega. different conversation entirely the point is sonic boom cartoon's coming out and from what i've seen of that it looks really funny so a cgi sonic movie i wouldn't be opposed against then i read hybrid of cgi and live action <laughs> Every Sonic the Hedgehog fan, upon reading that sentence, did a collective Metal Gear Solid exclamation mark above their heads. Wing. Exactly. We just went, oh, fuck. They're doing it again. <laughs> it's like, Sega, have you not learnt your lessons? This is no- Sega. They don't learn anything. Nobody likes Sonic X. Nobody likes Sonic 06. Why are you still trying this stupid... Like, it's not the presence of humans that bother me. Because humans have been established to exist in the Sonic universe. That's Dr. fine. Dr. Eggman. Exactly. But the, the, the fact that it's live-action humans, which means that they're probably going to do this stupid bullshit like Sonic X did, where they're like, oh, it's Sonic the Hedgehog and friends, but they're in the real world. The and only like... way that could work is if they, one, make the humans likeable, and two, if they don't overplay them, like they do with most things nowadays, live action. That is the biggest problem with a lot of movies that I've noticed that have come out over the last several, well, not just the, not the last several years, but any, any kind of film or show or whatever where characters, like, not non-human characters, mm-hmm. end up on Earth with actual humans. The humans overshadow them, even the if it's their own over- time. Every everything seems to have done like the Transformers live action films. Yep, it wasn't the Transformers that dominated those films. It was the humans. They barely nobody, dominated them. That nobody liked, and it's or the uh, um go- the Godzilla movie. Godzilla's movie in it for ten minutes. Meanwhile, we get to watch all of the army crap. And in Sonic X, they did the same thing. The humans seem to have much more of a role to play in things than Sonic and Friends did. And it's like, why? It was also the fact that Sonic X wasn't very good. Yeah, Yeah, Sonic X wasn't all that good to begin with either. Especially the the English release, because they cut out so much stuff. Yeah, but um, when when I... It's it's really bad, but when I read that it was going to be like a a hybrid of live action and CGI, and and I've come to the conclusion that it's going to be like, oh, I mean, it might not. Maybe it won't, I don't know. But obviously everyone's thinking it's going to be, oh, Sonic the Hedgehog ends up in the real world bullshit again. And for some, <laughs> oh, re- God. And for some reason, the, the closest comparison I could think of is the fucking Smurfs movie. Oh that came out. my God, no. And I'm, like, and I'm like, why am I thinking that? But it's like... Michael, that the don't same- jinx it. No, but that did the exact same thing. Oh, it's the Smurfs, but they end up in the real world. Look, they're in New York City and there's Neil Patrick Harris. And oh, it's look, all so it's wacky. Shit. And it's like, oh. Not because of Neil they... Patrick Harris, because Neil Patrick Harris is awesome, but. And it's like, if they go with that, the first half of the movie is going to be spent having the humans trying to hide Sonic from everybody else. <laughs> oh, God. And it's going to be like, oh no, there's no blue hedgehog here. And it's going to be like, oh, Christ. Let's feed him uh, milk. And I hate that. I hate it when they do this kind of shit where, like, these characters arrive in the human world and then he try to awkwardly hide them from everyone and it fucking works and it's like oh in fact actually i've recently been re-watching um transformers animated mm-hmm. which is a transformers cartoon which came out like years and years ago that did human characters right yeah that did human characters right not only not only did it did human characters right in the pilot episodes there was like a three-part pilot episode mm-hmm. and the first episode ends with them crash landing on earth and they go into like high, they go into like stasis lock for like years and years and years, and when they finally reactivate, they are in. They find themselves in like the distant future of Earth. It's not present day Earth. It's like what Earth might be like in the future, where you know robots are a more common thing. Mm-hmm. Like there's robots everywhere. There's like robot vending machines, robot burger joints. There's like robots to walk your dog and shit like that. And then when the Autobots reveal themselves and they help fight this sort of monster that went out of control, what happens isn't the Autobots go, okay, we need to go hide again. Quick, everyone go into vehicle mode. No, they come out, make their presence known, and the people of the city go, 
Thank you, Autobots. Hey, how would you like to become the defenders of this city? Sure. And it's like, ah, oh, thank you. It works. <laughs> And it makes sense because they see robots every day, so there's no reason for the Autobots to hide. Mm -hmm. And it's like, why didn't the films do this? Because they're directed by Michael Bay. This made so much more sense. Oh. (laughs) It just made sense. And, like, Sonic X admittedly avoided this problem as well. Eventually, Sonic and his friend's presence became global knowledge. And they essentially became celebrities, which I could, which I'm fine with. It meant that they didn't have to constantly hide every time somebody walked into the room. But uh, I feel like we've we've begun to deviate from the original point. Point is, the Sonic movie better not suck. It probably probably, will. It probably will. They Uh, should have done a movie version of Sonic Generations. uh, Because I don't. That's already well. It's not already happened before with Sonic, but they've done that with um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh yeah, that live act, that not live action, not a live action movie. It was, it was the, an animated one. And they did there was all a... of the Ninja Turtles series. Yeah, that I haven't seen it, but you know the idea itself is really good. Mm-hmm. And what was brilliant was they had the Shredder from the newer series, who's at the time the newer series, not the shitty three yeah. D crap now, but the one before that where yeah, Shredder was like really a threat. Men- yeah, menacing red eyes. Yeah, and then you and- had um, Shredder from J- James Avery. From yeah. the original cartoon, and it's hilarious. Tonight I dine on turtle soup. Oh, James Avery. Oh, guy was a fucking legend. That man was brilliant. He was meant to be in Transformers, apparently. And I'm glad he oh, wasn't. Thank God he wasn't. <laughs> you're too talented for them, man. Yeah. You were too much talented for them. You will be missed. Mm-hmm. Uncle Phil! <laughs> will! <laughs> Oh, brilliant. Be afraid, Will. (laughs) Be very afraid. (laughs) All the, just all the clips of James Avery as Uncle Phil. There is actually a thing, there's a thing on YouTube which is like, like is a compilation of like all his evil moments. And it's like every moment where he becomes like, he becomes suddenly really threatening. I was about to say, like I can remember one of them where he's like, just gives Will the evil eyes. He goes, he keeps going, Will keeps going to Anvil. No, please, he's going to eat me. He's going to eat me. (laughs) Yeah, there's a bit where it's like, okay, I'm going to go away for a week and while I'm gone you have to do everything your Uncle Phil tells you. He just looks Uncle Phil and there's just a dun 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 <laughs> No Aunt Viv, don't leave me. No Aunt Viv is gonna eat me. Aunt Viv, no Perfect. Uh, Such a good show. That was a good show back in the day. But yeah, basically the Tetris movie, if they the make it bonkers, point. it could work. They don't take themselves too seriously. I think they're gonna Given the fact that they try, they described it as big and epic, I'm mean, sort of like, oh, they're missing God. the point. Yeah, it's like the same thing with. I know it's not a video game film, but do you remember when the Pirates of the Caribbean film first came out? Oh God, yeah. Everyone was like, they're you know, oh, it's a film based off of a Disney ride. You know, that's never gonna work. And and then the, everybody who works in that film went, fuck you, we've made it good. And it's like, oh yeah, shit, and it was, it was fantastic. Then so, came the sequels. I did like the sequel. I was about to say, to be, f- I liked the second one. Third one was okay, and then the fourth one was like, I even I was sitting there going, "This is shit." I liked the fourth one. I did. <laughs> the only thing I liked for that point was more Barbosa. That was it. I think I'm the only person in the history of the world that actually likes the fourth part. <laughs> I was movie. about to say. Everyone else is like, no, they're gone too far now. It's like... and, then, and while everyone else is sort of like recoiling in horror at the at the fact that the fifth and the sixth movies are in the works, oh, God. I'm sort of, <laughs> I read that. Everyone else is sort of like, oh, God, more of them. I'm just like, okay. <laughs> Money making train. I'll watch it. It's Disney. They're going to keep making sequels to everything. Have you seen their back catalogue of sequels on their animated films? To be fair, those films majority of them will straight to vhs and dvd that's true they knew they knew going in as like okay this is not going to be like we're not going to bother making this a big budget thing because nobody really wants these and it's going to be just... shit yeah to, to be fair lion king 2 was decent i was just about to say lion king 2 was probably the least bad out of the bunch and while return of jafar is bad don't get me wrong return of jafar is very bad it got iago right yeah like he had, he had, he had amazing developments in that film. It was like, wow, really? The most, 
And also, I haven't seen it, but apparently a lot of people really do love um, the King of Thieves Aladdin film, the third one. That wasn't bad. Actually, yeah, that wasn't a bad movie. But they got Robin Williams back for that. Yeah, which was weird. And also they got John Rhys Davies as Aladdin's dad. Yeah. yeah. Ass, very dangerous. You go first. Uh, it's... Uh, movies these days, man. Movies. Yeah, uh, the, the thing about the movie industry is that most of it is sequels and remakes. Yep. There's very little original material coming out, unless you're Disney and Pixar. Yeah, and I don't think we're going to get anything original from many people for a long time to come, because sequels and remakes keep making money. It's kind of, it kind of is a bit of a sad thing, because the thing is, though, like, just taking random example, uh, the Robocop remake. Mm-hmm. I don't... I don't know how much money that made. I'm assuming it made. I'm, I'm assuming it. I'm assuming it got as much money as it needed. It made a pay lot. For the, yeah, it made a lot. The reason for that is because people people are either going to react to a remake as being like, "Oh, cool, they're remaking RoboCop," or "They're remaking RoboCop." What the fuck? Why would they do that? Yep. Both parties are still going to pay to see to that see film. the movie, and that's the problem. It's kind of the sad thing. It's like people are sort of like, "Oh, why are they making this movie? It's going to suck." Stop! But I need to stop I need giving to watch them your it. money. I need to watch it in order to make sure it sucks. <laughs> watch it online. That's... Don't do that. I was about to say, don't do that. You'll get arrested. Yeah. But um, actually, you say like. Just going off a slight tangent, are you aware of the sort, kind of sort of Frozen sequel that they're doing? I heard they're doing a sequel. It's not really a sequel per se. It's like a little short thing. They're probably going to put on a like a, on like a DVD extra or something. Oh, okay, that's not bad. Because like I remember when Tangles came out on DVD, that came with like a little short sequel to it. That sort of like was taking place around uh, Rapunzel and Flynn's wedding. Yeah. And it was all about, like, they, like the horse and the chameleon lose the wedding ring, and they spend the whole thing trying to find it. Oh, those I crazy ha- animals. I haven't seen it, but apparently there's a great bit in it. Where, I just read this, but apparently there's a great bit in it where, like, when they lose the ring, the horse and the chameleon sort of look at each other, and they have, like, a sort... They imagine what will happen if they don't find the ring. And they think what will happen is they will go, We can't find the ring! The wedding can't happen! And then the kingdom explodes. <laughs> can't find the ring the place explodes yeah they're doing Very something positive. similar with they're doing something similar with frozen where it's like gonna take place around Anna's oh god it's gonna be something. olaf apparently was uh, uh, was not really much all we know is that it's gonna take place at anna's birthday and elsa does something wrong oh those crazy ice powers <laughs> i was i was just about to say something that, that may make people who love frozen very angry with me I was just about to say that oh, it turn, Olaf has his last shenanigans and then it turns to night and then they're like, oh, Olaf, where are you? And they find him and it's basically the end of the snowman. Oh, that's dark. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, when I first watched Frozen at the end, you know, when he starts to melt. Yeah. In, within like a few split seconds, I was like, holy shit, they're killing Olaf. And I was like, that's really Big of you, Disney. That's a bold move. I was going to say, they you. don't usually kill off the comic leads. I know. I was thinking to myself, that's a bold move, Disney, but th- this could make some great tragedy. I'm all for it. And then film goes, nope, he's okay. I was like, oh, what? <laughs> I mean, I don't hate Olaf, so I wasn't like, yeah, kill the bastard, but I was like, it would have been an interesting move on their part. I think the only reason I like Olaf because he's voiced by Josh Gad, who was the original actor from Book of Mormon. Yeah. yeah. I think if it's any other actor, I'd probably be like, oh, please, no. I liked Olaf because he lacked any cowardly traits. That's true. Like he, like he, at no point did he ever express any kind of cowardice, which I was kind of surprised by. No, I'll give that he was. Still ends up like the snowman. <laughs> Every Frozen fan's going to go and go. How dare you, James? Did you see that um, snowman sequel they did? Like snowman and his. Uh, no, and I haven't dog. watched that. I. They did. They did. I watched it with my mum like last Christmas. I think it was came it out. bad or was it okay? It wasn't bad, no. But like, because obviously it's the snowman and the snow dog, and obviously you're watching this thinking it's just it's just like the snow- it's very similar to the snowman. In fact, it's kind of cool because like it centers around a different boy, and him and his mum move into the house that the boy from the first snowman live- used to live in, mm-hmm. 
and they find like a photo of him with the original snowman and I was like oh god the nostalgia oh god oh, the feels it was, really, it was really sweet and then they make a snow dog and it's like oh go on adventures and all that but the weird thing is the fact that like you're getting to the end going I know that's how this is going to end oh god the pain and the snowman spoilers melts again <laughs> And it's like, ah, oh, you keep doing this to me, movie. You gave us hope, and then you smashed it. But then, this pissed me off, is the fact that, like, obviously he makes a snow dog as well, and that comes to life. And it's like, and then you realise, oh god, the snow dog's going to melt. And it's even worse, because it's a little dog. And, the, and at first you're like, oh god, the dog's going to melt. But then, nope, dog gets turned into a real dog. Oh. And I'm like, so the snowman doesn't get to live. But the fucking dog does. I, that would have um, pissed me off. Double standards much? It's also the fact is that it's teach How it teaches kids as well. It's like, yeah, all things come to an end. It's a very, very rare message for kids nowadays. And it's a very powerful one at that. Yeah. And that just feels like you're wasting it. And I think that's why the, the, the original is the better one. But... I may give it. Yeah. I may give that sequel a look because it doesn't sound as bad as what I thought. Oh God, no! It's not. It's not bad as like what you think it'd be. It, it, it is what a sequel to the Snowman would be. Does it still like, have no dialogue? Oh yeah, no, no one speaks. Good. That's that's the major thing. Cause it, it it was. I'm pretty sure it was made by the same people. I think it was, it was in safe hands. Yeah. It was. It was very much the Snowman for a new generation of children. That's fair enough. Although, which is no. Still, that little hiccup at the end. Yeah, aside from, aside from that bullshit ending, it was good. It was decent. Uh, that's gonna be. Co- I pl- think that'll be coming on for this Christmas as well, probably. Probably. And plus, since there's no dialogue, it means like you can riff on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't. That's. It's gonna be so evil thoughts. It's always good uh, to riff on things. Oh yeah, definitely. Particularly the bad things, or even the good things. You can riff on the good things. I was about to say, it's 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 good and healthy to riff on things you like. I remember, I know we're going very off topic here, sorry. But um, I remember years ago, there was a thing on the Sci-Fi Channel, or Siffy, if you want to call it that. Oh, God. Uh, it was like a two-part drama called The Witches of Oz. And it, okay. and it was sort of like, yeah, it was, it was like a kind of sort of sequel to Wizard of Oz, where Dorothy was now back in real world. Uh, she had grown up, and she was like doing things. But then she didn't remember. She didn't fully remember everything that happened back in Oz. Like, of course, of, if you remember at the end of the Wizard of Oz, spoilers. She gets back to Kansas, and it's like, oh, it oh was my all God, a dream. Spoilers. Oh, yo, oh no, I'm spoiling a film that's like eighty years old. I was about to say. But um, yeah, it sort of like follows on from that, and it's like obviously she thinks everything happened in Oz is a dream, but then it turns out no, it wasn't because the witches have come back and they're in the real world and they're like out to get revenge or or whatever. And like it was interesting because then it turned out that like three, like it turned out that like her best friend who was there with her, it turned out he was the scarecrow. Like he has come, he has come over into the real world, but he had forgotten that he was the scarecrow in Oz, and the lion came over as well. It, no, it was. It sounds bad, but it, well, I say that because it was interesting at first, and then it got really bad. It's seafy. What'd you expect? Because it got, it began to like make no sense, because, like, and it got it got to the point where me and my mum were just riffing on it. Cause it was just like, oh god, this is so stupid. Like there was a whole bit because it was like when it turned out that this one guy was the scarecrow and this one guy was the lion, it was like, oh, then this guy must be the Tin Man. Because she, 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 like, Dorothy, like, met a bloke, and they were going out, and they really liked each other. And he was, like, and I think he, I think he, I could be re- misremembering, but I think he was, like, divorced or something. And he, he basically had a broken heart or some shit like that. So it was, like, oh, obviously, they're setting up to be the Tin Man. And admittedly, it's quite funny, because, like, the lion says to him, you know, he's the Scarecrow, I'm the Lion, and you're the Tin Man. And he's, like, I'm the Tin Man. I am the Tin Man! And he goes to, like, punch a mon- an evil monkey or something. And then he just gets the shit kicked out of him. <laughs> and, and then it turns out he's not the Tin Man. And it's like, on one hand, that's kind of a funny twist. <laughs> but that, but then the actual Tin Man comes the fuck out of nowhere with no foreshadowing. I am and the Tin like, Man. No, he doesn't speak. He actually doesn't speak. <laughs> and, he's this, and he's this really buff guy with armor. Oh, God. And he's got, a, and he's got an axe. And it's like, shit. <laughs> But, Tim yeah, Man's it, packing. 
it, it started off quite interesting and then just got really bad. So it's, it's kind of like um, back in um, university we, when we did like film all nighters. When we did one for Christmas, it was um, nativity. The first one or the second one? First one. And we all, with the exception of the person who runs it, we all hated it. So it just turned into us riffing the shit out of it. Uh, you think if you, I think if that was the case, you should have watched Nativity Two. I haven't watched Nativity Two. Apparently, because a lot of people would say that Nativity One's quite good. It wasn't. But if you didn't, if, if you if you don't like Nativity One, you will hate Nativity. 2. I already hated Nativity One, so that sounds like torture. <laughs> Which is really sad because it's got David Tennant in it, and I like David Tennant. Oh, David, why did you do this? It's because he's got kids. I know, but they all do this, and you can't fault them for I that. I hated that little Desmond Poppy bastard. He's back in Nativity oh, too. Fuck him. <laughs> fuck that. And he and he's got a bigger role. Did they not learn from the first one? Apparently not. He was obnoxious and annoying in the first one. Why give him more? Ro- oh, fuck it. If you it, also just to further twist, just to further twist the knife. Yeah, go on. Uh, in, in Nativity Two, he essentially kidnaps a busload of children. That's my head banging the desk. I mean, they don't call it that, obviously. But it essentially cause, is because the film is saying that he's in the right. But yeah, he essentially he's not kidnapped in the a right. <laughs> well, because like they. They were meant to be going somewhere, I think, and then they had to cancel it, and it's like, sorry, kids, you can't go. And he's like, no, fuck the establishment, we're going to go anyway. And he essentially kidnaps a bunch of kids. Oh, and poor hell. David Tennant gets dragged along for the ride. Oh. It's like the first film just has emotional blackmail, pedophilic poppy. Because, I'm sorry, when he goes to his trailer and he's got all, like, the stuff on it, like, that's blatantly kids, I went... If there was a cop around this area, that would be the first person I would go to arrest. There is no way in living hell anyone would go, no, that's normal. No, it's not. It's, oh, that fucking movie. The only good thing about the first Nativity movie, the only good thing, was when they showed the other school what they were doing for their Nativity. Herod, and they showed all like the tearing apart and everything, and they just made it dark. I was like... This looks awesome. Why aren't we watching this? But no, we saw more of the shite. Speaking of bad kids movies, I still need to see the Postman Pat movie. Oh yeah, that's, that, that's 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 out on DVD now. I think. Wow, I didn't even know. It was, <laughs> I forgot it was actually coming out. Yeah, it came out earlier this year, and I know you're probably thinking. Michael, why do you want to watch the Postman Pat movie? I will tell you why. Because it looks so bad. I was about to say, the animation for it alone. It hasn't got that good of an animation. And the just the plot for the film is just pure genius. <laughs> no, have, you, have you heard that? They X-Factor Postman Pat. They X-Factor Postman Pat. But that's not the best part. The best part is that because Pat's now a celebrity and he's too busy to do the post... Somebody says, I know what we'll do. We will create a bunch of Postman Pat robots to do the job (laughs) for him. And then it turns out this is all a conspiracy to take over the world. Of course. A Postman Pat movie as a take over the world plot. I want to watch this. We want to watch this train wreck ensue in front of our eyes. And David Tennant, like, voices one of the bad guys. And he's, like... That was hilarious. His Scottish accent is so thick, you could use it as a flotation device. (laughs) It's great. He's, like... I can't remember any of his lines, but they've got, like... There's a lot of, like, big British names in that film, actually. Because you've got Stephen Mangan as Pat... Uh, David Tennant is one of the baddies. Rupert Grint is in it. Yeah. Uh, Jim Jim Broadbent's in it. And they got Ronan Keating to do Pat's singing voice. Oh, God, why? (laughs) Because that's what Steve Coogan sounds like when he's singing. Uh, Stephen Mangan. Stephen Mangan. Why did I get Stephen Coogan? Stephen Mangan uh, sounds like an Irishman. To be fair, the the film sounds bad. It does. It's not the Wallace and Gromit movie, put it that way. Yeah, but um, 
the thing about the thing is I can't completely hate the film because a it's not for me. It's a kids film. It's just some it's for like 2-year-olds and 3-year-olds. That that is ultimately what it, I know it's out, I know like normally I'm the first to advocate that kids shouldn't be patronized to. Mm-hmm. But it is very it is very much for little kids. And plus it seems to me that the people working on it were were at least trying to make a good film or at least an entertaining one. At least they didn't give a shit. Just well, like, it's, yeah, it's fuck like, it, just, just do what we want. Well, it's it's like Stephen Mangan and David Tennant obviously both took these roles because they've they're both dads now. They've got kids and or a paycheck. They... Which is what I'll most actors it... do. It. Let's oh, be don't honest. put it like don't put it like that. <laughs> That's what most actors do it for. No, but it's like because Stephen Mangan and David Tennant they've been in a lot of stuff and some of it is not appropriate for kids. So there's a lot of stuff that they've Casanova. been in that their ki- that their kids can't watch. So the Postman Pat movie is a perfect chance for like them to actually show some of their stuff. To I their agree kids. and disagree on that front because David Tennant does have the Doctor Who stuff at least, and yeah, but you could you could make the argument that it might be a bit too. I wouldn't want to show nativity, any of the nativities to my kids because that would mean showing them Poppy, <laughs> well, a sexual predator in the making, and fuck that. Hopefully, you won't get. Draft. Hopefully, like when you become an actor, your agents won't come up to you and said, "James, I got a new role for you. It's called Nativity 3. <laughs> oh God! No, no, uh, Mister Agent, as, I refuse. As an actor, I'd have to say yes because I'd have to take the role. But I'd be like, "Oh yes, I love Nativity. I love it every bit of it. Oh God, kill me now!" And like, just like in interviews, oh yeah, Nativity 3 is gonna, is, is going to be great. And then inside your head, you're just like, kill me now, kill me. just Please, kill me, just kill me, just put me out of my misery. I don't want to work with that guy. It's, <laughs> it's like um, uh Jeremy Irons. Th- he is so shameless. I love it when he when he's in a good movie, he loves it. Like when he talks about Lion King, you can tell he absolutely loved playing Scar. Of course, but. When he's in a bad movie, he literally just admits he did it for the money. I think every actor who's been in a bad movie does that. No, usually they try and hide it. T- well, he's well, some, one of the few of... that actually just goes straight up. I did this because I bought a castle. <laughs> some of them do free it. It's like the ones that the the Razzie Awards. Uh, oh, for those, God. For, for those of you who don't know, the Razzies are essentially the reverse Oscars. They are awards for the worst of the worst. Mm-hmm. And some some actors have turned up to claim their Razzies. Yeah, Halle Berry didn't, did that, didn't she? Yeah, for Catwoman. Catwoman got, like, won a Razzie, and she showed up and was like, yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> I, I, I admire these actors who freely admit when they've been in a when, when the film movie, they've been yeah. in is bad, or when they've done a bad performance, and they're like, you know what, I'll, I can put my hand on my heart and say... I did bad, but you know what? I'm not gonna let it. I'm not gonna let it like haunt me for I the rest of my it years. With good humor. I'm gonna roll with it. Yeah. Accept the good humor in the situation. It shows and I, you're I, a good person. I can't remember the name of the actress, but there was like a movie that there was like a romantic comedy movie that came out years ago called All About Steve. And wait, the, I think the, I've heard of this. Yeah, the lead actress in that like won a Razzie. And, like, she came to it with, like, a whole bunch of DVDs of the film that she gave out to all the audience members. And I'm... Sandra Bullock? Yeah, yeah Sandra yeah. Bullock, that's it. She ke- she turned up with, like, a whole bunch of DVDs of the film for them to give to the audience. <laughs> Riff to your heart's content. Ah, but... I think that's enough for movies, I think. All right, shall we move on to the other big story? That, but also I just wanted to quickly, before we move on to a big story, I wanted to punctuate, because um, I actually wanted to say, you've been proven right on something, Michael. I'm You're I'm usually I'm... proven right, but this one especially, on Destiny. What, what about Destiny? That it was shite. About... Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't recall ever saying that Destiny was going to be shite. I just recall saying that it just looks like Halo without Halo. That's mostly what it is, but it's also bad. Well, thing, well, thing is though, I've heard that Destiny's not shite. It's just that it's not as good as everybody thought it would be. People played it and went, "No, this is all right." I would still say, by the looks of it, it's really bad, with the exception of the music. The music sounds amazing, and then the gameplay, and then the ga- and then you actually get to the game. And Peter Dinklage. Yeah, I've heard oh, that Peter Dinklage does not do a good performance. Peter, Th- let me just say this: Peter Dinklage. Every time I've seen him in something, like in films and everything, he always brings his A-game. Peter Dinklage being the short guy in Game of Thrones. Yes. 
And it's he always brings his A game to everything. And it's like when you finally watch when you look at his performance in Destiny, you're like, what happened? Were you it's that possible. uninvested? It might be down to poor direction. Yeah. Rather than poor acting. Like somebody said, like, oh, you need to do it more like this. Or maybe even if it was just Bungie were too scared and they didn't want to tell him to do another take. Maybe. I'm not saying be a dinkers for acting like that, but sometimes when you are working with someone who's like a big name even if they're act, even if they're chilled, you're still scared to to bring them up on because they're a big name. So that's also hmm. might be a factor. Yeah. Again, that's not saying anything against the actor or actress. It's just again poor direction, and that's what that looks like. And also, it should it makes mistakes that even multiplayer games that have been out for like 10 or so years did not make 10 years ago it like um for example the storyline this is what happens when the storyline happens it goes it gives a little hint of something and then it goes if you want to find out more go to bungie.com in game <laughs> they couldn't fit text in the game guys <laughs> like this has been made a trope. At the beginning of the game, there's a guy who goes, I could tell you about the Traveller. About everything that's gone wrong. But I won't. <laughs> <laughs> Essentially is what he's saying. <laughs> that's how bad the storyline is this. It's bollocks. You know what it sounds like? It sounds like as they were writing this, it's like, hang on a second. We need to give all this information to the player. But they're playing a video game. They're going to go when they get to it real quick. Well, let's just take all of that out and just put it on like a supplementary material that they can look up later. But then the problem is, if you if your story is requires you to give the player a massive exposition dump at the beginning of the game, <laughs> rewrite your story. Yeah, and then just give you nothing for the rest of the game. It's uh for goodness sake, even MMOs like World of Warcraft get this right, and they're ten years old and they barely give you story to begin with. <laughs> Come on, this is really bad. That still makes me laugh. I could tell you everything, but I'm not going to. Yeah, like, that's not, that's what he says. Not, not even like one of those stupid justifications. You know, it's like, you know, when they say like in, in video games or anything, why don't you just tell me what's going to happen now? I can't tell you yet. You must learn for yourself. You know, they always do that kind of excuse. You must find the truth yourself. They don't even give that excuse. He doesn't, he doesn't even give that excuse. He doesn't say straight, straight up, I, I won't. But he says, like, he just gives vague bullshit, but it's it's basically just, he says, I won't. <laughs> it's like, oh, why? I'd actually love to see a game be that blunt. It'd be a parody, of course, but just like for a game to sort of go, like... Parody like, of Destiny, so, I'd be up for that. There is so much I could tell you, but I'm not going to. <laughs> I could give you this massive, epic storyline that you deserve, but I won't. <laughs> That's essentially Destiny in a nutshell. Yeah. Depressing, but... Apparently, Destiny's going to get massive support, though, for the next few years. Yeah, because that's where all the storylines are going to come in. It's probably because they've invested so much money into it already. They were banking on this being big. Yeah. And uh, to be fair, it did It did make all the money. Oh, yeah, it did. It made, it, it, it it made so, all the money it, back straight away. It, it didn't, like, underperform in terms of sales. It still made loads of money. It's just that... I think that's what made it even worse. The critical response has just been like, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> Sometimes even worse than that. So... I see. I haven't. I don't. I could be wrong. There's probably somebody out there who absolutely loves this game to death. Oh, there will yeah. be. There, there always is. But um, hell, there's some psychology seen... stuff into that. That it could be that some people say, "Oh, yeah, I like this game," is because they've invested into it and bought the game. And it's like instead, it's the opposite of buyer's remorse. Instead of thinking, it's... "Oh God, why did I buy it?" It's like, "No, no, I like this game, and I'm going to make everyone like it." Maybe it's because like it did manage to live up to their expectations but that, the thing is though a lot of problem i think the biggest problem with destiny at least from what i've heard is the fact that people it set so high of an expectation and it just did not live up to nope. it nope it's not that it's a bad game it's the fact that it just set such a high precedence and then didn't live up to it if if they just said you know we're making a new game called destiny and every trailer wasn't didn't do the usual if it didn't do that... Michael Beckwith doing a video game trailer. That is, that is my impression of video game trailers. 
And here's my impression of the video game trailer voice. Coming soon. <laughs> the new blockbuster title. Was that Don Lafonte for the film trailers? I, that is basically what I try to do for film tra- This I, summer. I, apparently, I do a very good trailer voice. <laughs> well, you did a good video game trailer voice just there, so... This summer, join the action in the most epic adventure to ever exist. <laughs> Call of Duty 27. Oh, God. <laughs> this time, those alien mermaids are going to get what's coming to them. <laughs> That'd be perfect. Oh, speaking of something, number 24, Final Fantasy XIII's come on PC now. Yeah, yeah we discussed this in the last one. I just read on something. This, this won't be a, a full news thing, but this is just something I found that was hilarious. I found this on Spoonie's Twitter. Turns out that it's about sixty gigabytes of a download. Uh, That's one big exp- pile of shit. So, so it's a big download. Yeah. To be fair, thirteen is a big game. Yeah, but on the not 360- that big. <laughs> on the three hundred and sixty, it came on three discs. Let me put it this way: on most most games on PC, like even let me name some MMOs like Star Wars: The Old Republic, which is bigger okay. and actually has diverting plots and everything. That's round about 20 gigabytes. Oh. Final Fantasy 13 is not that big. <laughs> maybe, maybe it's because of the graphical detail? No, because there's games with better graphics than the, on the PC. And even then, they, hell, there's some games like Tomb Raider is about 10 gigabytes. Uh. And that looks better than Final Fantasy 13. Then I'm afraid I have no answer as to why 13 is... <laughs> it's, <laughs> Although actually, it's, actually... It might be because it's not very well optimized. Maybe. Uh, just a quick anecdote, actually, regarding 13. I mentioned before that on the 360, it came on three discs. Yeah. Uh, not for the PS3, it only came on one. Yeah. But when I... My first time playing 13 was when I was doing work experience at a, a game station. And, like, it was during a quiet period. And uh, uh, I think it was towards the end of the week that I was working. And they said, like, oh, you can have a go on any of the games, like, to sort of display to, the, to the, any visitors or customers. And I saw 13 in there, and I'd heard rumblings about 13. Nothing bad, I just heard, like, I just, like, saw a trailer or two. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, I'll give this a shot. And obviously, I enjoyed what, I, what little I played, and I was like, oh, I'm going to get this for the PS3. And I obviously saw it in the box, it came on three discs, and I was like, oh, shit, this is a big game. And then I got it on PS3, and I was like, okay, I'm going to play this right now. Open the box, and it's just the one disc. <laughs> and I shat myself. I was like, where are the other two discs? <laughs> <laughs> shit. And I was... I spent. I was looking at this box, going, "There's no other discs." And I looked at the box again, and I was like, "But there's only room for one," which means it must be all on the one disc. What? <laughs> and it was. It was at a time when I didn't realise exactly how you know storage on discs work. Yeah. So eventually, I just eventually I just sort of like, "Oh, okay." It's, it. I just was like, "So to clarify, the whole game is on this one disc." Mm-hmm. Okay, that's fine. Just as long as I have the whole game. It's good. PlayStation 3 Cause... disc could hold a lot more. but Right, because I, I was like worried. I was like, it's going to get to a point in the game and the game was going to be like, go to disc 2. But I don't have <laughs> disc 2. No! I'm never going to find out. Though in retrospect, it didn't really matter because that story was bullshit. It would have been good at that point. Uh, oh, that, no, 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 no. They would have made DLC for it. Ugh. <laughs> I just got flashbacks of 13 Do's DLC. Ah, get away! No! No! But piss off! <laughs> if I wanted. You won't make me pay extra to play a Saz! No! <laughs> I don't want Mass Effect costumes! Who asked for that? So many costumes! Why? They turned it to dress up the fucking video game at that point. Well, with Lightning Returns, definitely. That was the whole point. Oh my god. I find Dress it kind of funny lightning. they called it Lightning Returns and she didn't really return. Lightning Returns? I didn't even know she left. Ah. <laughs> uh, and on so that we, note... Yeah, yeah, let's move on before <laughs> it turns into another session of Final Fantasy XIII. Yeah, <laughs> we've talked about that game enough. But Assassin's Creed... it comes up every episode. <laughs> I think we've talked yeah. about it several episodes. <laughs> yeah. But um, yes, Ubisoft. Yay! The shitheads in training. Oops, Assassin's Creed Unity. They've shared two lovely pieces of information. Each more baffling than the last. Information that many d- decide to be bullshit. 
So basically what most of comes out of Ubisoft's mouth. Actually, I'm looking at one of these GameSpot articles that like they came up and and so far every comment on here is just yeah, okay, fuck you. <laughs> which which one is it? The resolution one or the Wii U one? Uh, for the Wii U one. Oh yeah, that... everyone's ki- everyone's kind of like got the same reaction. It's like we don't care. At this point at this point Ubisoft Ubisoft's trying to piss off everyone. Like they keep releasing shitty versions of PC games, so they're pissing off the PC gamers. They're pissing on the Wii U, so they're pissing off all the Wii U owners. They literally are only going to have the PlayStation and the Xbox left, and then they're going to piss them off somehow. Even they're getting fed up with it. I don't think there's a single person that sort of like defends what Ubisoft is doing, except for Ubisoft. Because it's Ubisoft. Yeah. It's... So yeah, what uh first the first thing the first let's cover the first article uh the fact that apparently Ubisoft no longer give a shit about a game's resolution. Mm-hmm. Uh, according to them, Assassin's Creed Unity, which is coming out for the PS4 and the Xbox One, you know, very powerful video game consoles. Mm-hmm. The game will only run at thirty frames per second. For the cinema- cinematic experience. Now, freight. Frames doesn't really bother me all that much. I know a lot of people prefer playing games on the PC because the frame rate is so much better, which I will admit I've seen it. Mm-hmm. But like, um, at least I'm thinking this right. Most games on the PS3 and 360 ran at 30 frames per second, right? Depending on the games, so like, like many just, were just, locked just, to that. Just, just for example, uh, Arkham Asylum and Arkham City, for example, on the PS3. Yeah. Did they run at 30 frames per second? I think they did. Okay, then 30 frames per second does not bother me in the grand scheme of things. That's... But this, this does not mean that I will defend what Ubisoft is essentially saying. It because... depends on what game you're playing. I think that's the big issue. Is that 30 frames per second works for certain games. Others, not so much. Like, for example, shooters, uh, racing games, fighting games... You need 60 frames per second, because otherwise it's too slow. It's too slow, too clunky, and it just looks really fucking bad. And, and it's, the justification for this isn't even all that great no. either. <laughs> uh, the, the, the short version is essentially, it's going to run at 30 frames per second because we don't care about you. But what they've said That's is in a that... Nutshell. They've basically said that... Oh, where's the Where's the quote? <laughs> uh the, it, the, well, the, the one that we both love, the one that we both love, uh, 30 was our goal. It feels more cinematic. 60 is really good for a shooter. Ac- action adventure, not so much. It actually feels better for people when it's at that 30 frames per second. Uh, Ubisoft, there's a whole bunch of people here that prefer 60 frames per second. I think the people would disagree with yeah. you there. And it continues. It also lets us push the limits of everything to the maximum. But if you wanted to push the limits of everything to the maximum... You would push it to 60. <laughs> Exactly, and try and make it as good. You are not pushing the limits. You are pushing your limits. And your limits seem to be quite low. Mm-hmm. It's almost like Ubisoft's games can't run very well. Oh, wait! Oh, they, it's almost like they're being lazy. Oh, wait. They've, they've basically... They, they've actually seemed to be trying to speak for the entire video game industry here. And that's what they say, a lot of people They say, well. I think collectively in the video game industry, we're dropping that standard because it's hard to achieve. Um, I'm sorry, Ubisoft. Last I checked, you didn't speak for every other video game company under the sun. I'm surprised I haven't heard other video game companies call them out on this yet, because I bet you some of them will let you go, um, excuse me? I, I don't think video game companies would call them out on this shit, because they don't need to. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody else is already doing, doing it. it. Loved it, Jim. I actually found this, and I went, what's Jim Sterling going to say about this? And lo and behold, <laughs> Jim Sterling's tweeted about this calling them bullshit. Of course, Jim Sterling would do that. It's Jim but, Sterling. Uh, it's Jim Sterling. But um, thank, thank God for him. Thank God for him. But uh, um, it reeks of laziness. From from, I mean, I'm not good. I'm normally not good at like being able to sort of like read what people are really saying. But it, it does sound to me as if like they they couldn't be asked to try and make it run at sixty frames per second. So they thought, oh, we'll just, we'll just settle at thirty and claim that it's just because oh, it's it's just the fact they said oh, it's just too difficult. It's like. So is your fucking job. Yeah, I think it's also money because also it's been proven that the Assassin's Creed movie, uh, games, as well as a lot of things that Ubisoft's been working on at the moment, has literally been bleeding them dry in terms of money. 
Which is why a lot well, of their may- stuff has been like reusing assets, like Assassin's Creed well, maybe if they is a remake to of make- every single other game. Maybe if they didn't try to make an Assassin's Creed every year, they wouldn't be in this situation. But that's the problem. They think they keep making money back, but they're not making a ton back, and it keeps making not problems Inte- for them. You know, I know Nintendo is like regarded as like being a bit of a cash cow when it comes to their franchises, but in their defense, at least they don't make like a 3D Mario every year. They don't make uh, the next le- they don't make a Legend of Zelda every and year. And at least they try to make things different in each game, for the most part. For the most part, yeah. But think about it. Like, every major Legend of Zelda title has always had, like, several years' worth of gaps in between. Mm-hmm. Like, Twilight Princess didn't come immediately after Ocarina or Wind Waker. Look. Skyward Sword didn't come immediately after Twilight Princess. But here's the, the thing Wii- that um, Jesse Cox brought up when um, Assassin's Creed Black Flag came out. Um, he saw like a little poster for something, and he's like, "Oh, is this like um DLC for Black Flag? Black Flag wasn't out at this point, mind you." And then one of the employees at Ubisoft went, "Oh no, that's the next Assassin's Creed game after Black Flag." It's just like the game wasn't even out yet, and you're already planning your next game. That was all. Re- then they even said it's going to be released the, the year after. It sounds like I'm surprised nobody at Ubisoft has called bullshit on the fact they don't even get a fucking break. It sounds like they're working their employees like to the bone. Wouldn't surprise it's like, me. They like finish Black Flag and go, okay, Black Flag's done. I can sort of just, just go home and relax for like a few months, spend some time with my family, maybe, maybe take a trip, and then Ubisoft come in and go, lol, no, get back to work on the next Assassin's Creed. Please, Mister Ubisoft, my son hasn't seen me in years. We don't care. We want more Assassin's Creed games. Oh, wait, no, we don't. It's going to get to the point where we're going to start getting fucking Assassin's Creed Volleyball. <laughs> oh, God. Coming soon, Assassin's Creed Golf. <laughs> Ezio it's... using his arm blades to move a golf ball. I'm pretty sure even Assassin's Creed fans are getting sick of it because they're like, guys, we just finished the last Assassin's Creed. Can you give us a break? Could you actually give us something new? Or if you're going to make another Assassin's Creed game, could you actually give us some really different gameplay apart from the same gameplay we've been getting for the last several years? It's not long enough of a wait, really. No, I mean, it's not the long enough why... of a wait, and they don't change anything. It's The reason why so many people get excited over, like, a new Legend of Zelda is because it's been a few years since the last one. We pl- Like, yeah. we played Skyward Sword. And again, they we change let... things. We... In Skyward Sword, we played it, we let it sink into us for like a few, a few years, sort of constantly looking back on it, thinking, oh, this is what it did. And then all the while thinking, oh, I wonder what they'll do for the next one. And like, years go past, and it's like, yeah, we don't hear anything, but that means they're working on it, and that means something big is going to happen. And lo and behold, something big is happening with the next Legend of Zelda. The, the other problem is, again, it's... Legend of Zelda, every time, even if they don't introduce that much new gameplay elements, they still have different storylines that are vastly different to the other games. They have something different every time. Assassin's Creed, it is always the same gameplay and the same fucking story every single game. The only one that changed it up was Black Flag. And that, to be granted, was good, but that was if you didn't play the storyline. If if you, like, with Legend of Zelda, if you showed me if one tv screen had twilight princess on it and the other had skyward swords on it i could look at the two and go those are those are two slightly different games mm. if you showed me uh, admittedly i haven't played a single assassin's creed but if you showed me two images from two different assassin's creeds i'd say they were both from the same game yeah. it, it is literally to the point of most of it's like oh that's just oh he's just in different areas but the same game oh no it's not it turns out oh no it's two different games one's the original assassin's creed and one's from far la- later and the other thing that baffles me is the fact that Assassin's Creed Unity isn't the only Assassin's Creed that's coming out by the end of this year. No! Assassin's Creed Rogue! It's like, what? Two different Assassin's Creed games? And it's not even like, um... I thought it was going to be like, um... Ah, oh, Liberty, I think it's called. Which was the PSP version. Well, like Vita. a... Like a sl- yeah. And then it turns out, oh no, it's a proper game release. It's like, What? Not like a spin-off or like a little short title to sort of like act as a go-between or something. This is the thing that's making me really worried about that as well. It makes me think they've cut out stuff from Assassin's Creed Unity and made another game. You know, that would not fucking surprise me. So, it'd it, it add up. Because it's, it's a full-on another game. It's and they made the same production cycle, it is most probably they removed stuff from Assassin's Creed Unity and put it into Bloody Rogue. 
You want the full game experience? You're gonna have to buy both. I am loving these fucking comments on the games on the GameSpot article because oh, they just they they are just perfectly captured as sarcasm. I'm gonna share some with you. <laughs> Go on. Um, uh, Steaming Potato says, "Lower your settings for a better looking game." Says no PC gamer ever. <laughs> uh, no hyperbole, please. Says I better lower my TV resolution to 900p when playing The Last of Us and Infamous and lock those frames down to 30. Didn't realize my experience wasn't cinematic enough. Uh, Unreal 849 says I've taped black bars onto all of my TVs and monitors Everything is cinematic as fuck now <laughs> well, That was my favourite That's my favourite one. Oh, here's another one You guys realise the new smartphones coming out this month have better CP Oh wait no that's not it <laughs> That's Could a dig against the con- advertisement No I'm, re- I'm reading basically a dig against the consoles not the games <laughs> Uh, yeah, don't know why that. <laughs> Every time an Ubi Dev speaks, well, another I'm a, Unity I'm... pre-order dies. Well, I'm embarrassed now. Uh, but uh, we all make mistakes, and Ubisoft yeah. makes them all the time. They're called Assassin's Creed. Uh, hey, oh. I, I, he, he's actually like uh. I don't know about you, James, but this is this is a this is not a comment. This is not a dig, but it somebody says I personally don't care about numbers. More if the game is good. PS3 was mostly 720p and 360 was mostly 1080p and I never could see a difference. But you can. And it's like, well, some people might not, some people aren't aware of the difference between frame rates maybe, but he does make a good point where like, maybe if, maybe if Assassin's Creed Unity is at least a fun game to play, it might not really matter, I guess. Hmm. Maybe, but again with resolution, it's like if the resolution is locked to a certain thing, it it will look bad on certain TVs. Like, hell, like, when I bought some of the Final Fantasy, the old games, because Square haven't sorted out the resolution on the old ones, on my TV, they look shit. Like, they are pixelated as fuck on my TV. On my Vita, it's fine, and that's why I play them on, because it actually looks okay. But on screen? Oh, God, no. The resolution is off the floor. So that's my prop- issue with the resolution thing, and and you can tell the difference, especially if you've if you don't play PC games, then yeah, you won't notice it. But that's because you're not playing them. But if you do play PC games that are well optimized and put on a better resolution, and then you look at a console game that is locked to a different resolution, like this, you will tell the difference like that. And that's the issue. I don't mind playing thirty frames per second, but. I want a good reason for it, and Ubisoft is not giving a good reason. Again, like what you said, it just sounds like they're being lazy. Yeah, a lot of people seem to be like sharing your sentiment there. At least in the comments of this section, anyway, because they they are basically saying like this is ju- this is just pure laziness on their part. Surprise! Your eyes aren't burning from the comments section. <laughs> Well, so far I haven't seen anything too bad. There are some people that are basically say are basically saying to stop complaining because it doesn't matter as long as the game is good. Oh, but here's the pro- here's the problem I have with that. That is still an issue. It doesn't matter if the game's good. If there's still an issue, it should still be brought up. Just saying, oh no, deal with it is not a good way, and it's actually a big problem. That is a problem with video games when people just say, oh, you should just deal with it. No, you should still flag it up. It's like is it tr- is it true that the Xbox One doesn't can't run games that are as good as a frame rate as the PS4? From what I've heard, yes. Because there was a comment there that said that the reason why they've done this is simply because they like the on the Xbox. Well, there was that comment again. Keep talking whilst I find <laughs> it again. Yeah, from what I've heard, Xbox is a little bit behind on the PS4. The PS4 is apparently the bet the better system of the two, and even then, the PCs above them. But if you went by consoles, PS4. Is the stronger of the two options at the moment in terms of frame rate and resolution. But then again, it also matters on who's developing the games. And certain people say, oh no, we can do this 30 frames per second. Oh no, we can do this at 900p or something like that. We don't need full on options. Yeah, here's the comment. Uh, this is not about whether the game looks good or not, it's about Ubisoft not making 1080. 1080- 
Oh wait, no. Let me, let me start again. This is not about whether the game looks good or or, and it's not. Oh, this is poor. God damn it! Why can't people <laughs> pro properly do grammar? Oh, How God. do you basically, grammar? Basically, what they're saying is that the reason I'm making it 1080p is because on the Xbox One it would only be 900p, not 1080. So by putting it down to 30 frames per second, they are essentially ba they're essentially making it so that Microsoft won't come knocking at the door asking why it's not at the same frame rate. Possible. It's a possibility, but I could see comp the gaming companies doing that, but I could also see them just basically saying, "All right, then we just won't have a game on here or something like that." But <laughs> if that happened, Ubisoft would be screwed so badly. Like hell, remember what happened to Watch Dogs? Yeah, which is still not out on the Wii U. But I think the Wii U might have dodged a bullet in that regard. It's gone to that point where I, it, I wouldn't be surprised if Watch Dogs... I was pissed when I found out it got delayed because when I first heard about Watch Dogs, I thought that would work so well with the gamepad. Yeah. And I was gone to the point where I'm like, you know what, I don't care if it's not on the Wii U anymore. Because it, it, I think... I'm still... And to be fair, I'm, st I'm actually beginning to... I'm, I was really excited for Watch Dogs, but now none of the game's been out for like several months and people have like talked shit about it. Yeah. I'm like, you know what? I'm actually beginning to go slightly off of this game. Because from what I've heard, it's essentially just another Ubisoft game that's essentially Assassin's Creed. It's like what I said earlier when um, most of the Ubisoft games on PC are shite. I wasn't kidding. It is literally that they're really badly optimized. They don't run very well at release. Like, the only two games that seem to have run well on PC from Ubisoft have been Rayman Origins... And Valiant Hearts. You know what's the key thing of those two? They're 2D games. How do you mess those up? You'd have to be extremely special to mess those up. And the, the thing about Watch Dogs as well, on like, wasn't it like on the PC? Like it didn't run all that well. Like no, the frame it, it wasn't ran that great. worse than the consoles. Like really and then bad. Somebody, then somebody hacked the game, found the original assets... Up to the quality, so it looks more like it did back in the original game footage shown at press conferences and all that, and it worked fine. Mm -hmm. There was n Ubisoft could not justify as to why they had to lower the frame rate. The game worked fine at its full at its full potential, and yet Ubisoft sold it as a downgrade. I'm gonna go by what Jim Sterling says. At this point, with Ubisoft, Ubisoft should just stop releasing games on PC. Because at this stage in the game, their games don't work very well on PC to begin with. They might as well not flip in bother. And again, I love it how in the next article they say, in our minds we'd be cheating fans by providing a lesser version of the same game. Well, we keep getting that on PC, funny enough. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, that is actually the next news. Ubisoft explains why Assassin's Creed Unity is skipping Wii U. It's because they think it'll be, they'll be providing a lesser version of the same game. Um, Where do we begin? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of in two minds about that, because... I... Because on one hand, it's almost like them saying, like, we don't think it would be fair for Wii U owners to get a slightly to get a downgraded version of the game. And it's like, well, I suppose that's fair enough. But then you're not providing an alternative. But here's the problem. They the have already had an Assassin's Creed game on Wii U. They had Assassin's Creed Black 3. Flag. No, uh, did they have Black Flag as well? The Wii U had Black Flag. And it had Black Flag. And, a, well, here's and the... apparently it ran fine. Well, here's the thing. We, uh, Assassin's Creed Unity, from what I've been seeing, it looks exactly the same as Black Flag. There is no, barely any difference. So if that's the case, why the hell are they using that excuse? It just sounds like they're saying, oh yeah, we're not going to get as much money. Or we're not getting paid by Nintendo enough. Ergo, they want more money. Yeah. Because there is no reason for it not to be on Wii U. Because the Wii U would run it fine. Yeah. I played and Assassin's Creed on Wii U. I didn't like it because I didn't like Assassin's Creed 3. <laughs> but I played it and it ran fine. Apparently, and the thing is, Black Flag is a massive game, isn't it? Ro yes. Because, with the, um... And from what I've heard, the Wii U had no problems running it. So I don't see what's Unity's excuse. Because Ubisoft don't like the Wii U, from what we can well, see. Well, I mean, 
that 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 that's not an excuse. That's just that's just pathetic. Yeah. But but the other thing is that there's there's the, the fact that they've said we don't want players to get like a downgraded version of this game, but then not provide an alternative. It sounds like that's half of a sentence. It's like they said. We're not going to release Unity on Wii U because we don't want players to receive a downgraded version of the game. And it feels like after that they should have said, so here's what we are going to do. Instead they've said, you're not getting the game. And? Well, there's no and. You're not getting but, the game. But then what do, we, what do the Wii U owners get? Well, they don't get anything. So you're not even going to give, you're not going to give them anything at all? Nope. Well, what about Assassin's Creed Rogue? Well, they, they can't get that. But why? Well, because, again, the Wii U can't run it. But Assassin's Creed Rogue is coming out for the free, PS3 and 360. And the Wii U is capable of running games that have been on the PS3 and the 360. No, it can't. Uh, yes, it can, Ubisoft. It, it can't. Ubisoft, it can't. La, 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 <laughs> That is essentially Ubisoft in a nutshell. If, actually, no. The Wii U owners do get something. What do they get? Just Dance. <laughs> oh, God. Apparent, apparently, Just Dance is all that Ubisoft's willing to give. Because the Wii U couldn't even get Rayman Legends to itself. Oh, Michael, you sound bitter about Rayman Legends. Yes, I am. Understandable. The, ga- the game was finished, and then they delayed it. Because Ubisoft are assholes. They had the game done, and what did they do? Well, we're going to delay it. Why? So that every other console can get it. For fuck's sake. They'll get it later. And then they've done the... And then with, with Watch Dogs, that game was released on every other console, and then Wii U version got delayed. I'm sorry, double, st- and, but everybody else got it. They didn't do the same thing. Oh, it's taking us longer to do Watch Dogs for Wii U. So are you going to delay the whole game? Oh, no, everybody else can get it. I'm sensing double standards here, Ubisoft. That's Ubisoft in a nutshell. But you know what? It, Ubisoft can slam the Wii U all they want. It has gone to the point where a lot of Wii Uners don't give a shit. Like, as somebody, as, as, again, I've got the comment section up here. As someone puts here, one question. Does anyone care what Ubisoft says or does now after abandoning Wii U? Watch Dogs will sell no copies with Super Smash Bros. out a few days later. Very true. <laughs> Here's another one. Well, the Wii U has already had two Assassin's Creed games already, right? So it really gives a crap. I was about to say, once you have one or two... if you, Once you have Black Flag, you don't need any of the other games. At least Black Flag has something different about it. And here's a great comment. That hasn't stopped you from releasing crap games in the past, Yubi. And you have a long list of them. <laughs> Good comment. I just think and at this stage is... in the game, people should not take Ubisoft seriously, and they should definitely stop pre-ordering their bloody shit. Because until Ubisoft actually release games that are vastly different and actually have something new to them, they're just buying the same game again and again. I know this is... When it comes to stuff, sometimes that's fine. Like, for example, people keep buying Dynasty Warriors all the damn time, and that is the same game again and again. But... With this, it's just appalling. And I don't know why. I think it's just a, Ubisoft's attitude. <sighs> what do you think, Michael? I, I'm just fed up with Ubisoft's bullshit. <laughs> I can tell you sound like, oh god, why? I, I, I'm actually getting... Because the thing is, though, Rayman Legends was the last Ubisoft game that I got. And I don't regret it, because Legends is a fine yeah, game. Yeah, it's good. But Watch Dogs, I'm, I'm beginning to consider passing. I know I wanted it, but now I've just gotten... the wait, it's, I've waited too long. You're not missing it, much. And, and all I've heard is, like, I've heard, I've heard no good things about it. Apparently the game works fine. It's just yeah, all, the, contra- all the controversy surrounding it is just... And it pisses me off, because the whole hacking thing sounded so cool. At the moment, the o- I-, I still want Child of Light, though. And that pisses me off, because Ubisoft made that. I still want Child of Light. I've heard mixed things about that, but... Child of Light looks good. Uh, my, uh, my former housemate played it, and he said it was good. Hmm. And I want it on Wii U. And I'm sure, I'm, I'm sure I'll get it at some point, but... Ubisoft is really doing nothing for me. And, and the more they talk, they are just... Digging their own grave. I know. It's like... Even EA is sort of looking at them going, Shit, man. <laughs> Dudes, you need to calm the hell down. I was about to say, EA recently, with the exception of Hardline, have actually been okay. Like, for example, on Origin, they keep giving away free games. 
Origin's actually working now for the most part. <laughs> They're trying to solve things, even though I still don't believe I'm on Hardline. I'll believe it when I see it, but... Other than that, they are actually not doing too badly at the moment. I haven't heard any news at the moment, but give it a few weeks. Mainly because Dragon Age Inquisition's coming out soon, so... There'll be some controversy coming out, don't you worry. Uh. This is EA, but I I agree. At the moment, Ubisoft is literally... It looks like it's trying to make itself the bad guy even worse now. It's like they've all got really pissed one evening and they're like, hey guys, how much can we piss off everybody? Uh, I don't know. Oh, hey, ha- how about, how about we have all our games run at 30 frames per second? Oh, that's great. Hey, hey, what if, what if, what if we don't release Assassin's Creed Unity or Assassin's Creed Rogue on the Wii U? Oh, that's great. What yeah. about we don't release, we release crappy versions of the game on PC? <laughs> I actually don't know if you saw this, James, but like several months ago, uh, before Smash Brothers had even come out, yeah. uh, it. Oh no, I remember we talked about this. I, I don't think that pod, I don't think that episode ever got fully made because something went funny with the audio. But on the day that they announced some new character, they were going to announce some new characters for Smash Brothers, which turned out to be Robin and Lucina from Fire Emblem oh, Awakening. Oh yeah. Uh, Masahiro Sakurai on these like daily images thing for the game. Release an image which was a trophy of Rayman. And that threw everybody off. Because we all knew we were going to get a new character being confirmed that day. And then this picture of Rayman in the game suddenly appears. And everyone got really confused. Because they was like, does that mean Rayman's in the game? It turned out it wasn't. Rayman wasn't going to be in the game. He just got a trophy. And I don't know the reasons for it. But somebody made a really good comment when they said, what's probably happened is that... Because apparently the, the trophy was designed by Ubisoft themselves. They made like a trophy design and gave it to Sakurai to put in the game. And somebody said it was essentially like Ubisoft was trying to bribe Sakurai into putting Rayman in the game. <laughs> and this was Sakurai's way of going, lol, no. You have a trophy, that's it. And they're like, oh, hey, they were like, oh, hey, Mr. Sakurai. Oh, Ubisoft. Hey there. Yeah, we. How's that new, new work on Smash Brothers coming along? Oh, it's, it's going very well. Well, can we ask something? What's that? We, we, we thought we'd like to give you this. Oh, what is this? It's uh, some original assets for Rayman. Oh, that's really sweet of you, Ubisoft. Yeah, it is. It's, no, just if you felt like putting in the game at all. Yeah, I think I will put in the game, Ubisoft. You make a great collectible. Well, well, well we, 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 we were thinking more of like maybe, you know, because, you know, like a, like a character. How so? Well, wouldn't it be cool if you like, could have him fighting Mario and Sonic and all that? Mm, no. But, we want actual but he, but he, more female characters. Which you don't have in your games. Sorry, we've we've already got, you know, Mario, Sonic, Mega Man, Pac-Man. You know, video game character icons that define the industry. That's not... Uh, I feel bad saying that now, because I, I, I do like Rayman I was about to say, Rayman, Rayman as a series as a whole has been good, but... It, yeah, sorry Rayman. I didn't mean to diss you like we're, that. We're taking the piss out of Ubisoft. We love you really. If you think about it, though, I don't think Legends sold all that well because because of Ubisoft delaying. I was going to say, I don't thing. think it didn't undersell, but it didn't sell spectacularly. It would have sold better if they stuck to the original plan and just like held off the other ports and just kept the Wii U one come out. But no, they fu- they pretty much doomed it from the start. And now I'd be I'd be surprised if we ever saw Rayman ever again. Oh, that depresses me. I want another Rayman. That was a good good uh, series, but yeah. Ubisoft are just being idiots. And uh, here's the that, thing that's that also very, annoyed me. That is very... What? Is that um, this is also leaning into the the earlier controversy with female characters. They keep having this thing of, oh, we keep going in time and keep going to our past selves. I'm like, do you not think one of them would actually be a woman? <laughs> a female descendant? You do realise women existed. Yeah. <laughs> don't you? Women existed? Yes. But they didn't just pop up around the time feminism started? No. They actually were around Ubisoft, and there's actually some very important women in history, but you keep loving to skip them or make them... Well, or they keep making them in the, oh, we need to save them all the time because their damsels in distress. Yeah, Ubisoft are the very same people that when they asked why they chose a woman hostage in that gameplay demo for like the new Rainbow Six or something, mm-hmm. their reply was, well, women make better victims. And on that bombshell... 
Uh, in short, uh, Tetris movie could be decent. Ubisoft, still idiots. Very big idiots. You know, it wouldn't surprise me if, like, maybe... <laughs> This is probably me just like jumping to like too high a conclusions, but go on. Maybe maybe in ten years' time, Ubisoft will just not exist anymore. I would not be surprised, considering they'll, how they'll much go, they're bleeding they'll, money. They'll go the way of THQ and just vanish. It's because they keep bleeding money at the moment. They're hemorrhaging it, and at this point, they ha- the reason why they have to keep releasing games all the time is because they keep making money. But at the end of the day, soon people are going to get so fucking tired of this, they're not going to buy it. And guess what? Then they're going to go downhill. Actually, you know what? I'm going to say something that's very damning. Yes, go on. I think Capcom are better than Ubisoft. Ooh. Because while as Capcom has done shitty things in the past, you know, uh, in DLC that was already on the disc. Still uh, not, not releasing local- Mega Man. Still not releasing Mega Man. Uh, not localizing some of their games. Uh, at least when we get D- their games, they're good. Yeah, some DLC bullshit, but at the end of the day, I still like some of Capcom's games. They're also vastly different, as opposed to Assassin's Creed, Watch Dogs, which are pretty much the same game. Plus, at least Capcom don't give stupid-ass PR statements like this. There's, Cap- Capcom are, Capcom are like, I've done some dickish things, but they're smart enough to know to not try and admit to them. They know when to shut up. They're like, okay, we've done this, this is going to piss some people off. So what do we do? We're just not going to respond. Do not give them any ammo. We do not need the bad press. We've already got some enough as it is. Ubisoft are like, oh, we, 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 we need to address this. You, you don't think that's a bad idea, Ubisoft? No, no, no. We, we, we'll need to talk to them. Ubisoft, they're going to rip you apart. If you don't save this properly, you are going to be fucked. Oh, no, no, no. We'll handle this. Uh, the truth of the matter is that uh, gamers don't prefer things in 30 FPS. Oh, for fuck's sake, Ubisoft. <laughs> you idiots. <laughs> You had one job, <laughs> and you failed at that. Consecutively. I'd like to imagine that when Ubisoft came out and was saying this, there was some guy off stage to the side doing like the shut up motion, like going stop doing talking, the, the cut, stop talking, doing the cut it out motion with the hands going no stop. Ubisoft, no, no, stop it. Ubisoft, no, no. bad Ubisoft, bad Ubisoft. It's like Ubisoft like don't like really aware of what they're saying. It's sort of like. Again, I'm going. I'm going a bit too far with this, but just let me have this. They're sort Go of like, on. yes, we we think uh, gamers, gamers, gamers prefer playing things at 30 FPS. We also don't like black people. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Well, actually, and have I mentioned how silly women are? I was about to say they'd be more like nobody likes playing uh, as women. ISIS. That's what a bunch of jokers they are. <laughs> Ubisoft. They are the Tories of the of the gaming industry. <laughs> I don't know. I think if it came down to the Tories and Ubisoft, I'd go with the Tories. <laughs> oh, God. If Ubisoft were there offering me Assassin's Creed and David Cameron was there offering me a handshake, I'd take the handshake. <laughs> I, 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 I barely know anything about you, Mr. Cameron. I don't fully respect you or idolise you, but fuck it. <laughs> I don't know about that one. Uh, I think maybe I've gone a bit too far. We should probably stop. <laughs> and, and on that bombshell, you've re- <laughs> Michael's revealed a lot. <laughs> I'm gonna get like I'm gonna get like a bunch of like angry people at the door. Oh god! When we put this on Facebook, people are gonna go, Michael, what the hell? I just have to reply with, I am very sorry. <laughs> I am not. Like I say Ubisoft. some stupid things without thinking. In many respects, I'm kind of like Ubisoft. Yeah. J- James, I have an announcement. I'm quitting the entertainment dome to go work for Ubisoft. <laughs> I think I am perfect for them. I don't think before I speak. <laughs> that's that's Ubisoft tagline in a nutshell. With any luck, I shall have, like, two new Assassin's Creed games within the next three months. Alongside Rogue and Unity. <laughs> They're always Assassin's Creed Rug- from the other games. Assassin's Creed Rugby will be a thing. You get to stab people on the pitch. And it will have Tomb Raider DLC for no explained reason. But only for the Xbox One. And only, only for the Xbox One. <laughs> PS4 gets bugger all. PS4. <laughs> right on that bombshell. P- P- PS4 can have the lightning DLC. <laughs> oh god, no, that's that's even worse. I should work for Ubisoft. Ah, <laughs> oh. oh, shall we stop? Yeah. <laughs> I think on that bombshell, ladies and gentlemen, that is it. The it for the entertainment do this week. <laughs> yeah, uh, this is good. This is goodbye. Uh, also, please don't kill me. <laughs> Be careful, Michael. They'll be watching you. Joke's on them. They don't know where I live. (laughs) 
Ladies and gentlemen, this is James Hall yeah. signing off. And this is Michael Beckwith. And I totally don't live on 32 Elmswood Street. <laughs> Go find him, folks. Goodbye. Bye.